Hey everyone, it's Sherry Vegas here and in this tutorial today I'm going to be showing you how you can create your own candle vessel slash pot so you can create some really unique custom candles. I'm starting off by mixing up some eco resin. Eco resin always comes in two parts. One part is powder, one part is liquid. Now I'm using a new brand today that I've not used before and this one is from Nicole Moulds which I'll add a link down below. This one is a three to one ratio. So I need to have three parts of powder to one part of my liquid. And I always like to weigh this out to make sure that I am getting accurate measurements. But it's always good to just double check if you do use a different brand of eco resin what they recommend on their ratios and how to sort of measure it out whether it needs to be done by volume or by weight I always like to measure this out into separate containers just in case I do over pour. Another brand that I do use quite often is the Jesmonite. I hope I said that correctly because everyone always gets so cranky at me in the comments for saying that incorrectly, but I'm sorry, I don't mean to do it on purpose. I use the AC100 from that brand, which I find works really well. So I'll use this one and let you know my thoughts and how it compares to the AC100. But with the AC100, it is a 2.5 to 1 ratio, unlike this one, which is a 3 to 1. So it's always really important to check if you are using a different brand of eco resin because they might have different measurements and they also might have different working times. So it's always good to just look into that and not just assume that it will be the same across the board. I've also heard good things about the Ellie Cam and also too about the Colorberry version of eco resin and all really eco resin is is just an acrylic based resin it doesn't contain VOCs and I find it to be very similar to sort of plaster of Paris but it's just a lot stronger and tougher and it lasts a lot longer to use so it's really great for using it for items like this also too a lot of eco resins are really fire resistant and they are recommended to be worked with to make candle vessels so it is a really great option to use for this particular item what I'm doing now is mixing small batches of the powder into the liquid at a time. I kind of like to think of this as what you would do if you're baking a cake where you put the dry ingredients into the wet. And I'm also using a flour sifter because I find it gets me a lot less lumps. Anytime I just dump the full amount of powder into the liquid it always gets really lumpy and clumpy and I find that I am mixing it for so much longer just trying to get those clumps out and that this method just really works for me if you have a method that really works for you go ahead and use that but this is just the way that I get my eco resin really silky smooth in half the time it takes me if I just dump both items in together and give that a really big mix up once I'm happy with the consistency, I've got no lumps or bumps, I'm going to separate this into half. I'm going to pour that half into a cup and then I'm going to color that half. I did find that this eco resin already has a super white base to it. So I didn't need to add any white coloring into it. It already had that really like vibrant white. Sometimes I do find with the AC100 or any others, I do still have to add a white um, dye into it to make it look white and then add my colors on top and I'm using the colors that came with this and I'm going with a yellow and a red just so that way I get a really pretty like peachy orange color and I'm don't, not using a lot of color these are always really super strong when you are adding color in to your eco resins you don't want to be using any epoxy pigment paste even though they're both different resins. Epoxy pigment paste does contain some epoxy in it and it won't go well with eco resins because it's an acrylic base and not an epoxy base. So you always want to make sure you're either using mica powders or pigments that have been designed to go into an acrylic resin. I also just wanted to highlight that it is really important to stick to accurate measurements. If you have too much of one part and not enough of the other part, you might find that it will set too fast and you won't get a chance to pour the eco resin, or you might find that it won't ever fully set and harden and that can affect it as well. Or it might set, but then it will be very easily like prone to being broken, especially if you are using it for a candle because it will be getting heat. 
So it's really important to stick to those ratios because they have been done for a reason. Sometimes I do see people that purposely will make um, their sort of eco resins a bit more liquidy to get less bubbles, but that can also affect like the structural integrity of your item by doing so which can just make your items more fragile. It can cause cracking as it's drying or even cracking when the candle is burning down. So that's just something to note. Something else that can cause cracking is also um, doing this when it's too hot. If these set too fast, that can also cause cracking. So you just want a comfortable room temperature of about 24 degrees. Now what I've done is with my two different colors, and if you don't want to create this sort of effect, you can always just leave it and make it one color, is I've poured them at the same time and I've switched halfway through. So that way I'm going to get some really cool swirls or marbling coming through with these two different colors. I'm also tapping it while the resin is still in that sort of liquid form, just so if there is any air bubbles that do get trapped in the mold, they'll come up to the surface. So it's really important to give it a really good tap. I'm also using a Nicole mold for this, which if you've watched um, one of my previous tutorials, you would have already seen this. I really like these molds, especially for um, this, because they come with these hard shells, which means that your items stay the shape that they are. Sometimes you can find if you just have a silicon mold, when the mold gets old, the items will warp just from getting a lot of use. So these hard shells are really great because it keeps the mold exactly the same. You just clip them up and you let it set in those shells. Now I'm gonna be using two new colors. One is blue and one is green and I'm gonna be doing a different swell effect for this one. I have mixed up my eco resin the exact same way I did it the first time around. And then I'm just dropping a few colors into my base. So I've done two drops of green and I think three drops of blue. I give that a slight swirl. It's really, you have to be very careful not to over mix this because then it's just gonna turn bluey green and you're going to lose that swirl effect. And also too, as you do pour it, it's gonna keep swirling. So if you don't want it to be super marbly, you do need to do like less is more, but I do like to just push those colors down a little bit. So that way it's just not all on the surface. When I do pour it, that way the blue and green does go the whole way through my eco resin. And I'm using another Nicole mold for this one. This one has a little bit of, um, I forgot the word for it. Uh, there is a particular word for this style of mold, but it's got like a curve that goes the whole way around. I want to say clamshell, but I know that's not correct for this particular style, but I've poured that in. You want to under pour it slightly, give it a really good tap, make sure you don't have any bubbles in it. The less bubbles you have in your mixture at this stage means the less sanding. This one also comes with a lid, um, so I've just poured the rest of that mixture. And it took me the three to one ratio, so 400 in total to create the, both the um, container plus the lid. And then I've let these set. So these do set within about 20 minutes, but I do like to leave them in the molds for longer, just in case there's still a part that's a little bit soft and setting but the molds are really easy to pull off. I'll also add um, a discount code down in the description for this brand. So if you do wanna get some molds, you can get a little percentage off if you do use my discount code. And I do really recommend these molds. They are quite good and they are the perfect size for candles. So I'm just removing it. The silicon just pulls back. It's super simple but I left these for two hours just because I wanted to make sure that they were really set before I did go to demold them. And then I am going to seal them. It's really important to seal them, especially if you are going to be using them for candles, just because you don't want the wax to be seeping on in to the actual pot. So sealing is really important. A big tip that I do have, if you are going to be sealing them, let them sit for a few days. You could seal them straight away when you first pull them out, but if there is still moisture on the inside, so the outside might feel dry, but then you don't really know if there's still a bit of moisture on the inside. So if you seal them straight away, you might be sealing that moisture inside, which then can cause issues down the track. 
So I always leave these for two days before I do seal them. I am just sanding the bottom. I'm starting off with a rough grit, which I think was 200. And I'm just going through and taking any of that sharp edge off the bottom and just doing that so it's got nice and flat. And you could also use an orbital sander if you just needed to do the bottom just to save your hand a little bit of effort. But I am just hand sanding these. I do like to sand pretty much straight away after I demold them because they will still be a little bit soft because they won't be fully, fully cured. So it's a lot easier to sand then than to sand the next day. I then, once I'm happy with getting all that roughness off, I then just switch my grit to a thousand grit, just so that way I'm getting rid of all of those sanding marks. And I'm left with a nice, smooth, even base. I went and washed these just with some water and left them to dry, and I came back two days later. Now with sealing, especially if you are gonna be using these with candles, you do wanna make sure that you really look into the type of sealant you're going to use. I'm using this wax polish from Oxa, which is a 100% natural product and it's actually a really good one for this as it is non-toxic. So it's really important to look into your sealers if you're gonna be using a different brand. You don't wanna get one that is toxic because obviously you're gonna be putting a candle in there and you don't wanna be burning those fumes off. Now I'm just using a microfiber cloth and I'm just adding the sealant as I need it, really buffing that in, going all around, making sure I get the inside, the outside, the top, the bottom, everything. And I'm doing the exact same process on my other container. And I like to do this twice. So I go through once, let that fully dry, which I find, um, if it's nice weather, a few hours. If it's a bit colder, maybe the next day. And I do a second coat of sealant just to make sure that I didn't miss any bits and that I've gotten a really good coverage the whole way around before I even think about pouring my candle into it. Just something to think about too is if you are making a lid to go with your jar, you just wanna make sure that you cut your wicks short enough so that way, especially if it is a lid like this, because it does sit in, it recesses in to that jar, you don't want it to be popping out. So I've cut my wick down short enough. It's been a few days since I've made these and they've all been sealed up and left to dry. And now I can do the final step, which is pouring my wax. And if you've never made a candle before, I do have full tutorials on candle making. So definitely go and check those out. I'll add the link up. Let me know in the comments what your favorite pour style was. Was it this swirly one where you just add the little drops in and then pour it out? Or do you like it when you split off the two different colors or three different colors and pour it all in together to create the other style? Let me know which one you like best. And I hope you got some benefit from this video. And if you did, please give it a big thumbs up. And if you are new to working with Eco Resin, I do have a full playlist that I will link up um, all to do with like more in-depth tutorials to work with Eco Resin if you want to start getting really creative in that area. Or if you're new to candle making as well, I do have a full playlist on that, which I will also add up here or add it down in the description. So definitely go and check those out. But I post new videos every single week. So I, if you are interested in those two topics, definitely subscribe um, and check out all of the other videos I have.